You gotta get a donut for you. Yeah, people walking by. All right, all right. So this is episode 31, Feeney Talks with Friends. My name is Eric Feeney. I'm the founder and president of Friends of Feeney. Our mission is to help children and families that have heartbreak or tragedy. I use this podcast to talk with wonderful people that are doing great things in the community. And episode 31 has a wonderful guest and it does great things in the community. So before that, episode 30 was a blast. It was like Krusty's last show. We had Dave Pyle on. We had surprise guests with Matt Whitney donating a $5,000 check from the whiskey we had taste. We had Donut Crazy showing up with her cute little two donuts. Check it out. Episode 30 was a good one. And I'm really looking forward to it. Um, episode 31. Season 3 has started. And we, again, we have a wonderful guest. What's up, Liam? What's up, man? How are you? Thanks for having me, Vinny. Yeah, this is going to be fun. And then before we even begin... Found out yesterday, Liam. Are you ready? I'm ready. This is an award-winning podcast. Whoa. <laughs> You're an award-winning podcast. I'm, I'm, I'm in awe right now. Right? Yeah. You should be honored. I, I, I'm both in awe and honored. So thank you to my guest, James Mark, episode 26. The 4-H has nominated James Mark for the Judith Ferry Award for his work that he did on this podcast. Episode 26, I encourage everyone to go back and watch it. James Mark is a great person great friend again does wonderful things for the community he shows his cow at the 4-h um 4-h has a camp the ara farm yes yeah. yes what do you know about the 4-h uh my but my my son went there this summer and enjoyed himself quite a bit there all right yep um man and actually we just had his, his birthday party up there too so wow they, they, they did a good job 4-h there you go so thank you james mark he's a 4-h award for the podcast we're celebrating in November at the East Scott Hall, yeah, Scott Hall in East Windsor. And he invited me to attend to see him get the award. Award-winning podcast, Dave. Nice. And again, this can't be possible without Dave from Direct Line Media. If you out there want to be a podcaster, talk to Dave from Direct Line Media. We're, we're here, 31, 31, season three, Liam Sweeney. So honored. Um, before we even begin, congratulations. I saw something. Uh, we saw each other at the Gastro Park. That's right. I saw your wife. Yeah. Something was showing. Congratulations. Thanks, man. We're, we're officially going to be outnumbered moving to the, to the zone defense yeah. come November. Or no more man-to-man. -man. No more man-to-man. -man. Uh, zone. Man-to-man -man defense didn't work for us. Prevent defense or yeah. like... Three, uh, four linebackers, like runners. You got runners? Uh, not not a lot of runners, but, you know, we're, we're, we got a five and soon to be three-year-old, so probably in prevent because you just don't know what's going to happen next. Rory, right? Rory, Rory and Claire. Yep. Claire. Yep. Wonderful, beautiful names. Thank you. Do you know what the third one's going to be? Yeah, we're going to have another boy. Boy. Yep. So Claire Claire's going to have two brothers looking after her. And she's seeing and the two brothers are going to have their, their sister looking after them. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. Very cool. Do you have names picked out? Come on, drop an exclusive. No, on the podcast. no, 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 no. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying to stay married, man. You know, <laughs> <laughs> do you know the name? Uh, uh, not, not yet. We're, we, we got a couple in the, you know, it's it, on your third one. You're down, you know, you've cut, cut a few off. So. But we, we have a pretty good idea. Irish baby book names? No? Uh, you know, in, in the ballpark, they're definitely in the mix right now. You know, uh, still working through it, through the process. You know, we have, we have to you know, stick to the process. Yeah. Know? Trust in the process. Because uh, I have a Neela and a Bridget. There so. you go. Uh, Irish baby yeah, books. So yeah. I love Fantastic. Claire, Rory. Yeah. Yeah, with Claire, we went we went to, you know, the, the kind of more traditional spelling, not the Irish spelling, but still, you know, Irish name. Yeah, we stuck with it, and obviously Rory is uh, a well-known Irish name. Uh, you know, nice. there's, there's another guy who plays golf. I don't know he's if you've decent. heard of him. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's all right. He's kind of mean. I, we waved at him. My daughters, we go down to the see the players, get the oh, ball yeah. signed in the little area in Cromwell. Uh, you know, Jason Day, great picture signed. Rory just like kind of walked by. Yeah, but he's you know zoned in and champion so i we get that we yeah, understand you know i won't hold it against he him. was the only person that showed up in the Ryder cup for that team so you know true i mean he was very focused you know he's going in how's your that. golf game uh it's gotten better it still stinks but it's gotten better <laughs> what compare your golf game to your hoop game uh it's substantially worse okay yeah yeah okay. i'm like you know my hoop game is like pretty decent for your your average pickup 
and my golf game is not decent for your average pickup. Okay. So, um, yeah, definitely hoop way. I mean, I've been playing hoop way longer, and without question. I'll tell you a fun fact, though, about my family. So my, my great-great-grandfather, or my great-grandfather, he served in World War I, so, like, old, born in 1897. He came back from World War One and won his club championship. Like, so everything that I do on this planet is, like, zero. I mean, a man came from trench warfare and came back and started. What's his name? Uh, he was also a William Sweeney. Well, nice. he was a William Sweeney. My dad's a junior. Very cool. Yeah. You should do this thing. Yeah. Oh, we got to shout this thing out. What is this thing, Dave? You want to talk about this? This is a great little segue. We have never pulled this board out. But this does, like, family. I, I'm only saying this because you brought this up. Your vision in a video. It goes over your family history and your heritage. Uh, ways to remember the precious moments of time, one story at a time. Capture your hi history in high definition. So he'll put to together a whole video about William Sr. and William Jr. Yeah, his golf should... championship could be on the screen. Uh, I mean, or yeah. anyone out there, check this out. Episode 31, we finally pulled this out. Pulled it out. I love it. reason to. Thank you for I, sharing. Bill about... Sweeney would definitely be into it. Bill Sweeney. Friends of Sweeney. Yeah. <laughs> check it out. Yeah, there's... Uh, Dave one time graciously donated this to a raffle, which a, was a huge hit. Uh, helped us raise a lot of money for Friends of Feeney. Uh oh, uh oh, we're getting it. Pulled this up, putting it back. Very cool. Does it come with a like a free genealogy test too, and all that sort of stuff? <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, Liam Sweeney, what do you do for work? So, um, I do. I have a government relations firm that I'm a principal in uh, called Penn Lincoln Strategies. My my partner and I, uh, we we need to think of a really important name for it, and we're like. You live on Lincoln. I live on Penn, <laughs> but it sounds way yeah. bigger than it, it does. We've had we've had people uh, come up and be like, "Is this like?" Oh yeah, we've heard of Penn Lincoln, big big firm down in DC. <laughs> We're like, oh, and we just ride with it, you know, just let it be. But no, it's uh, you know, it's been great. I have a uh, my partner who's also like a really one of my best friends, um, Chris Vanov, who's also a West Harbor resident, um, and, and he's we, the one that lives on Lincoln. Yep, he okay, lives on Lincoln. Gotcha. I live on Penn. And, uh, Where are they in relation to each other? Uh, so Penn is like goes right into Morley, Morley yep. and then Lincoln is the street that like abuts the back of the Yukon property off gotcha. of Asylum. All right, cool. But yeah, so that's what I do for a living. I know I've been in politics kind of like my whole professional life in some nice. some way. So um, we'll we'll get into your occupation first. So yeah. Penn Lincoln. Explain because as a being in education, I yeah. hear principal yeah. automatically assume yeah. principal of a school. Yeah. Please explain principal of means it means that I'm a part of a business. Uh, Why and, not CEO owner? <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris founded the founded the company, and then I jumped on board afterwards. Um, but uh, it's been a lot of fun. We you know we do a whole bunch of stuff. I I do actually a lot of education advocacy work up at the state capitol. Um, you know, do everything from um, you know sports gaming stuff to um, insurance to um, uh, to education work, which is the kind of how I got into this space, which has a lot of been obviously very timely and that that sort of thing. But we yeah we we're all over the place in regards to issues we work on. We have a lot of fun, um, so it's it's a good it's a good time. Do you have people that work in your office as well? Yeah, we have one other person who is also a West Harvard resident. Shout out to Hannah Lemick. Uh, so, yeah, the Penn Lincoln. So, staff of three? Staff of three. Penn Lincoln represents West Harvard pretty strong. Do you have an office that you go yeah, to? Yeah, our office is actually in the CEA building uh, oh, all right. in downtown Hartford. Uh, on the Capitol second Ave. Yeah, Capitol Ave, right across from the Capitol. Got a good view of that, of the oh, Golden cool. Dome from over there. So, yeah, no, it's a, we, we're, we, we are very blessed to be I think over CEA's there. on three six. or five uh i think they're on six uh, well, nah, I don't close know. um but no i see uh, another our west another good west harvard dude gus 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 is over there all the time and uh, but no it's it's a good spot gus's beard is looking pretty nice it's strong right his, beard game's his strong. strong beard game yeah i feel like there's got to be some <laughs> application to that right he's an oil guy or yeah, some sort of definitely an oil guy conditioner yes for sure for sure you for hear sure. us gus we're talking about yeah, you yeah. <laughs> how's his hoop game 
Gus is Gus has got a pretty strong hoop game. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, I've never played hoop with him, but we've talked many times. Yeah, about no. Playing Gus hoop. is Gus has got a good strong. He's a strong strong pr- presence in the post, sort of like you. I mean, not clearly, you know, at, at the not same level. Yeah, okay. n- definitely not. You know, he's not dunking on dudes. You know? Is he Feeney Feeney McBuckets? Uh, yeah, I mean he he's got a nice touch. He's got a good good touch. He's like just like you, right? Very very, very easy around the rim. You know. All right, all right, Gus. Maybe I should could I call him on a one on one. I think, for a fundraiser, I, I think right now, Facebook Live. I think I want to see this one on one, Gus versus Feeney, you know, yeah, all right, whatever, whatever you want to put on there. August twenty first, twenty twenty one. I'm calling out Gus. I challenge you to a one on one for a fundraiser. I love it. To eleven. Let's go. Is he a three point shooter? Um, you know, he, uh, maybe. All right. I'm so, not. I, I, I so think. we'll play threes then. If he if he knocked him down, I play all ones to eleven. I'm questioning his three-point shot, so maybe we'll play with twos and ones. I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, he definitely has a better shot than you from three. Uh, but <laughs> but right, but your right. but your post game might be a little more powerful. All right, all right. Yeah. So I think it'd be a good little. He's tall. Little. I just sized him up at the gastro park. Did you do back, you go back to back? No, but like we were talking, and I'm like, I mean, does I've it, talked does, to him many does times. Does it count if you don't go back to back? True, true. But he was like a lot taller than I've always remembered. Yeah, he's a tall dude. Maybe, again, Beard Game was strong that day, extra strong. Yeah, I mean, some height. You know, it's just, yeah, it's, it's got the, the whole thing. So in addition to, I mentioned it earlier, great things for the community. Um, you want to talk about how you help our community? <laughs> yeah, so uh, outside of uh, my day job and uh, being uh, dad to dad and husband, um, to my, shout out to Whitney Sweeney. Got to absolutely have to do that. Um, uh, I'm also I serve on the town council here in West Hartford, and uh, you know it's and I'm also the the chair of the Human and Community Service Committee. So um, I deal with all the stuff that goes around our leisure services, the senior center, the library, uh, basically things surrounding kids here in town. And um, you know it's been a really great the Elmwood honor Community to, Center. Yeah, so we we have some kind of big potential stuff coming up with that um the town just acquired uh the old saint bridges property which i think some folks remember um and we are in the process of figuring out like what we want to do with it you know i've been since i got on the council one of the big things i wanted to do was create like a transformational community center because while elmwood community center is a nice place uh it, it it is old it's over 100 years old now and uh you know we are uh you know top 10 communities top 10 community in regards to population we need to have a legit community center and you know i grew up here in town so we didn't really have a place to come and hoop if we needed to play or just like wherever and so we you know what one of the things that i came when i came to the council i thought the the mayor Cantor, shout out to mayor sherry Cantor, um and she was super receptive to was figuring out a way we could you know look for that and so kind of that in the background um we worked with staff and staff who were the one the the town staff uh, shout out to uh you know uh, matt hart town manager and hello rubino turco for keeping their eye out and uh, st bridget's popped up and they they wanted to um they were like hey why don't we look at this this could be a space that we could do this and um and i think if folks are in town are familiar that property abuts the back of yep. Beachland. And so it has a real opportunity to be kind of this transformational space that, you know, we could potentially move um, the Faxon Library from off of New Britain Avenue oh, and, wow. and move the Elmwood Community Center into like a modern facility and definitely get some courts on there that yep. are that are not like JV standards that's, that are the kind Elmwood of- Community Elmwood. Center, yeah, four on four only. Yeah, it's at best. So tight. I mean, it's three on three full court, right? It's tight. Yeah, and St. Bridget's I played Thursday nights. Yeah, slippery. Uh, yeah, very dusty. I mean, good length, but slippery. Yep, yep. I official mean, size. You, but you should, I mean, it's like it's like and a huge bubble at like center. Basketball hockey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well put. Yeah, you just you, you got to get your skates on for that. Um, but yeah, I used to play over there too uh, on Sunday mornings as well. But like, it, mm-mm. So my cousin, shout out, we're doing shout out, shout out to Sarah Gallagher. She's okay. running for town council in the, in the town of Hart, Hamden. Okay. And uh, she's currently running, door knocking, 
raising funds, making awareness. If you were to give three pieces of advice for anyone interested, but um, I'm not saying she's asking for mm. advice, but yeah. I'm asking how yeah. would you give, what are three characteristics that would make someone a great town council? Uh, BU. BU. Like, and, um, you know, like the most important thing is to, to listen. Uh, that's, I think B, BU, listen, um, and, uh, and, and work hard. I mean, these are you know pretty general things to say, but I think too many people right now in politics try to do too much, um, try to be people that they're not. And at least what I found is the the the, the most effective thing is first and foremost, I think in whatever order that is, I think listening is the most important. People want to people want to listen, uh, want to be listened to rather, and I think that if you listen. Um, and and be yourself and be authentic with folks because I mean everyone's seen the you know the gets the suit from DC comes in you know looking at the you know their phone the whole time the authentic authenticity is lost so I think what people want is someone who's going to be real listen to them and then go to work for them and that's that's the that's what I would say I mean not that I'm <laughs> the best town counselor in the in the world but I find that that people appreciate that the most yeah um and i know that's why people love you know like our our mayor because she just she does all of those things really well she, and then throws in the cartwheel on top of it so i mean you know that's that's yeah. more than the trifecta you know that's the cart Can't beat that's the cart the cart cartfecta right she started the parade trend the cartwheel trend it was yeah. awesome i mean i, I mean you and I cannot hop Can on that trend. You know? Cannot. We I tried to do a cartwheel the other day at recess. Yeah. It did not. So what I do, well. or how I add on the Park Road Parade is I take the video and I like, you know, I'm the youngest person on the council. So I, I take the boomerang too. So I make, I make everybody look good. Yeah. And I just sit back. So your Instagram. I stay out, I stay out of that. Yeah. The Instagram is, 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 is solid. Very cool. No, I love parades. Um, Quick little segue, I'm wearing a parade shirt. Uh, this is a Memorial Day parade. I'm wearing it because my buddy Army Dan, he's in the 142nd. He is shipping out to Poland in four weeks. He's on his way to Texas. Uh, he's a first sergeant of the 142nd. Mm. Uh, it was at one time re in relation to the 141st. I was in the 141st for eight years. I was a medic in the 142nd, transferred over, and he had a Memorial Day parade, so I wore, wore the Army Dan shirt and we were raising money and if you wear an army dan shirt to army dan's party you're going to raise a lot of funds so everyone there being in the military you know bought shirts made donations so thank you for everyone at the 2019 army dan party mm -hmm. he just had a, a going away pumpkin carving party okay and it was rescheduled on the facebook event uh to sunday because of the weather last saturday i didn't get the memo i show up with my daughters dressed in costumes on Saturday, great it parenting. was on Sunday. Great, great parenting. Daughters were not happy. Yeah. They were dressed as Alice and the rabbit from Alice in Wonderland. Immediately took their outfits off. I was dressed as Rowdy Rowdy Piper, um, which is a fantastic costume. Don't you laugh over there, Dave. Um, but we get to honor a guest of honor every year. And this, uh, in 19, we honor John Egan. He was in the Air Force uh, from 1953 to 1961. He was a grandfather of one of my students. Uh, the year before that, we... Uh, honor Joe Roman who served in Iwo Jima mm. and then this year in 2021 or 2022 at the time it would be in 2022 May I'm going to honor my Aunt Ella so Aunt Ella uh, shout out to Aunt Ella uh, we had her wake and funeral today um, so she did so much for the VFW VFW mom of the year Naugatuck mom of the year she passed out uh poppy pins and poppies and just was uh, she lived to 100 years old so I want to take a minute to honor uh, tell everyone that we will be honoring Ella Niski uh, she's a wonderful person she used to send the five dollars cash in the in the mail you ever remember oh, yeah. grandparents for sure five dollar cash sure. yeah you remember those people oh yeah so Ella Niski um, just a wonderful person my love for parades are because of her in the opening obit Ella Niski loved parades and I feel like, uh, you know, Park Road Parade, I saw you brought it up. I see you and I see the crew. Uh, the Friends of Feeney float won best float. So I take great pride in the best float. 
Uh, we take we have a lot of fun, and I didn't realize my love for the parade maybe have something to do with Aunt Ella. So, means a lot. I love dressing up for holidays and special occasions. She did that. Uh, I love the military. She did that. So I'm hoping to honor her and to continue her tradition of loving parades, the military, and um, and just you know being a good person. So thank mm-hmm. you, Aunt Ella. Thank you for giving me a minute Con- to share. Yeah, Condolences to you and your family, man. Um, I mean, your Aunt Ella was better than my family because they would only get a dollar. You got five dollars <laughs> in the mail. Um, but that's awesome. And, and she had like 14 great grandchildren, like 15 and great was, grandchildren. And she was sending five dollars in too. Wow, I'm like, that's, that's money. And I was just a, a great nephew. She's my great aunt. She's my mom's aunt. So just a wonderful person. It was such a great ceremony, and just to see family. And my my mom got to see her cousins and uh, family that she hasn't seen in a while. Um, so a special lady. Uh, we, we they did a drive by hundredth birthday party. Okay. Last year. Uh, you I know, mean, one hundred is a number, man. Oh my God. And they listed all the things that she has experienced in a hundred years, and mm. you could imagine the list. Um. So maybe we got to get this to back to this again. Yeah. Aunt Ella. Twice and twice and. We're getting we're getting we're throwing it in there. It's gonna happen. But yeah, hundred man. That's 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 a that's a so, big number. Yeah, That's an awesome number. So too. yeah, and she she was born on um, on birthdays Halloween, so she's two weeks away from being one hundred and one. No, amazing person, amazing family, and just uh, I, you know I love parades for that reason. So it's so cool. Uh, didn't realize it, but the opening line of the obit. Maybe I'll share the obit in the link to this podcast, just because I'm ne- never that much personal stuff in the podcast and connection. But we're talking parades. We're talking legacy and family and family history and special moments yeah man well thank you little sidebar but thank you for letting me share that let's get into the hoop game let's i mean did we see my next last night did you watch the game yeah, last night yeah of course night. i did did you see my they, i mean my man julius Randle just picked up right where he left off the place was rocking too. oh man Is so that, much energy there's no place the better than the garden how many garden games have you been to uh, back in the day, my dad and I um, and like a family friend, we used to go see the preseason NIT. And so for for the folks that are as old as uh, Feeney and I um, remember that class that came to Duke with Jay Williams, Mike Dunleavy, Carlos yeah. Boozer. I got to see them as freshmen play. And that was like the, that moment. Did they play that, at St. Did they play St. John's? Duke St. John's. I used to go to that game. At uh, no, that was, this is a preseason game. I think they were like actually. I think they were playing like Kentucky before, like you know, in that in between phase of like when Patino had left. Um, but it was so dope. Like there's no place better than that because the way that you know the garden works is the it's it's you know it's built like a you know for for theater right. That's how the lighting works, and so everything is dark outside of the. Yeah. The, the of the of the actual court just glows and you and there's no there's not a bad seat in the house yep um and it was it was so dope but like last night was awesome and like you know here and like you know evan fiore stepped it up oh he, man was he 30 he had a he was tied his career high point. last night uh was it career high yeah tied, yeah, he had tied three threes in overtime yeah i mean those dudes were unkind i mean and you know kemba Kemba, kemba was i mean he turned the ball over a little bit but it's great to see cardiac kemba back Made nervous at the end he was but uh, Jalen Jalen Brown was it was impressive, man. Jalen Brown, yeah, he got a lot of buckets. He, he scored for, 40 46, plus. Yeah, I mean, you know, they were saying uh, R.J. Work. Barrett was great defender. R.J. Um, Barrett played well, you know. Like um, I was actually texting with my friend uh, Brian Durant, shout out to Brian Durant, who's a West Harvard guy. But uh, we were we we talk Knicks all the time, and I was a little I was I was almost selling on RJ because I've been wanting a lot out of him. You know, his number three pick, I thought very highly out of him come out of Duke. But he 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 had that big three in overtime. He played well. I still want to see him be turned into like a prime scorer. Yeah. But the Maple Mamba, the Maple Mamba, because he's from right. Canada. You know, Maple he's like Mamba. he's like Steve Nash's like godson or something like that oh, too. Yeah. Oh, no way! I did not know that. Yeah, That's yeah. cool. And then ain't no stopping Obi Toppin. Finally, yeah, got some he's, he looks time. he looks great. Uh, I think you know uh, making a real big jump his second year. Yeah, run run the floor. They're putting him in positions to score. But yeah, the Knicks look good. I mean. Look, I mean, they're not. They 82 don't. Eighty-two and zero. 
They had, no, definitely not. No. Um, okay. I, I bet you – this is – I was thinking in my head is, like, they played the, their, their heart out and that game played two overtimes. You know, I bet you they lose the next game. They're going to lay a dud next game. Yeah, I mean, there's 60. Be, I mean, the first thing Randall says in the post game is, like, I need to go to sleep. You know, I'm like, okay. Um, but, yeah, no, I think they look good. I, I, um, it, it's a tough – the NBA is, is – I mean, right now, a lot of stars out there. Yeah. And the East is tough. I mean, and it's a grind. Either. They're not even the best team in their own city. So, <laughs> true. No, yeah. I love the Knicks. I'm glad you're a fellow Knicks fan because yeah. you know, where? What about for baseball and football? Uh, I mean, I, I say consistent. I'm a I'm a Knicks and Giants fan. Okay. Yep. Me too. Knicks and Giants. Knicks, Giants, and Yankees. Sorry. All right. Baseball. Uh, but yeah, the Giants think. It's official. Disappointed every year. One and six start every year. Yeah. I think we need a new uh, new management team. With Gentlemen's got to go. Yeah. yeah. Bye-bye. Everyone's got to go. Clean yeah. house. Maybe we, maybe we uh, you know, we trade, you know, Evan Ingram, you know, get something for that. It was a, that was a really strong first-round draft pick, yeah, top-ten pick. Yeah. And, and, I mean, I named my dog. Luckily, I named my dog Barkley after Charles Barkley. Yeah. But, like, I feel like a month later the draft happened. And I'm like, you know what? Let's hope they get Barkley so I could have Barkley for yeah. two reasons. But it's tough when running backs, you know, it's yeah. high picks and running backs. And I guess Gettleman did that in Carolina with, with McCaffrey yeah. and now with Barkley. So, I mean, both of them are fantastic players when they're on the field. But this, yeah, so hurt. Just got to get on the field. Yeah. So, Knicks fan, that's great. What about your real hoop game? When's the last time you played pickup? Oh, man, I haven't played a while. I mean, COVID really screwed that up. Uh uh, it's probably good because I'm not hurting as much. I picked up the Peloton and said, "Oh yeah, yep," uh, which helped. I mean, I, uh, um, I, you know, I, I, Did you I, get your I don't, I don't, yet? doesn't really look like it, but I lost weight during COVID, uh, which was, which, which was good. My, my wife was very happy uh, about that. Um, Does she do it too? Um, no, my wife is naturally thin and has this metabolism that really infuriates my side of the family because we don't have that. <laughs> Um, but no, she, 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 she works out when she can, but you know, she's got a mom of three. I mean, they keep, you know, they keep her pretty. Yeah, she's chasing the kids yeah, all day. She's, well, she's chasing and, you know, throw them over the shoulder, picking them up. Squat. Them down. You got to squat down. Yeah. Them. yeah. Multiple squats. She's, she's much more flexible than I am. I, I have zero flexibility. Did you get your t-shirt? Did you do a hundred rides yet? Uh, I did. I've done over a hundred rides for sure. Uh, I didn't get a t-shirt though. I think um, you get something, don't you? Get uh, I some mean, swag or some, uh, no, they must've missed me. Oh man. I know I'm interested. I, we over COVID got like an inexpensive um, one of those guys, the uh, ellipticals. Oh yeah, and then it's cool. You set that up in front of the TV. Yeah, you know, watch Netflix and just yeah. go. I see. I can't do. Ne- I can't watch a movie and work out. I gotta have the tunes. Yeah, tune yeah, guy. Yeah. yeah, I've never been. I'm always a tune guy too. And I I used to like running on the street, but that's tough on my knees. And yeah. the Peloton, you know, uh, excuse me, the elliptical helps the yeah situation. that's what that's why i look peloton because whitney would always make fun of me, even when we'd come back from playing particularly in the morning uh i think i pulled my hamstring twice playing in the morning uh and she just laugh at me she's like oh, yeah, you limp for a week you're, you're an old man like, and then you go back next week at yeah, hurting yeah. Like, and you're like my oh, wife's like I... you were just you practically crawled out of bed yeah. rolled to get up but yet you're going to play i'm like Ugh, yep yeah no, no it feels great don't worry and this is no, good. you have a, a euro step kind of game. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you take full advantage of your two steps. Oh yeah. Where and how did, where that, did that come from? Uh, that came from becoming old and not being able to jump. Uh, okay. Um, so okay. figuring out how to best use those two steps as gotcha. opposed to going up, which you know I'm Irish, so I can't jump. I was so, gonna say, did you have hops so, at some point? No, no, never, <laughs> not once. Um, and so when that that whole phenomenon came, it happened to be after my illustrious basketball career at Hall. Uh, which was garbage, but um, you know that would have definitely helped if I had no, like we had that had fast forward a little bit. You know, Mono had kind of Ginobili had brought that a little yeah, bit earlier. Yeah, yeah. You know, then maybe I would have put that into oh definitely the Manu. You know, definitely, you don't flop like Manu, thankfully. No, for sure. That's no, the worst. that's you know. I mean, if I flop, it hurts. You know? <laughs> yeah, so he hitting, he can bounce up a little bit, hitting easier. your back onto the ground. Yes. So, uh, yeah, we'll get into hoop. Then we play another game. It's called first last best worst okay your first hoop game your last hoop game your best hoop game and your worst hoop game okay it could be real hoop pick up hoop first hoop game oof i gotta be over at the old ymca on um 
on um, North Hartford. Main Street, back where you know like Rosenberg, uh, orthodontist. Sally and Bob's. Yeah, like Ross Street. Uh, that that ortho the, the orthodontist place used to be the old YMCA. They had hoops courts in there. Uh, they had little kid hoops. I oh, mean, gotcha. you could play, but you had to like keep it keep it low. Um, that was probably where I think where my first game was. My last hoop game, yeesh, uh, was probably with you, actually. Sorry. And I think I pulled my hamstring, so I stopped playing because uh, it was too early in the morning, too cold and too old and too slow. Did you get up at 4.30? Yeah. yeah right? Yeah. That's yeah. early. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's to get there for five, yeah. stretch. Silly. Yeah. <laughs> Try to stretch. Quickly um, stretch. And I think my best hoop game was actually a Hall Connor game. I hit like game winning shot. And, Come on, and what year? Terms, uh, 2001. Game winning shot. Yeah, free throws, free throws. Yep. Iced it at home. It was the highlight of my basketball career. That's it. For sure. Um, but yeah, I think, that's, that's, I think that's it. Yeah. Yep, I hit a. A game, two game winners at the JCC. Over thirty men's league. We got to get you in that league. Yes, I need to. Wednesday nights in the winter. Okay. They have games six, seven, eight, and nine. All right. There'll be a captain and a draft like yep. fantasy football. Yeah. Uh, what about the Hoopers? So we had some Hoopers on episode twenty-two. Okay. Who we got to check out Ty. Oh yeah. From the JCC. Well, Ty's a ringer. He he rigs the draft, right? <laughs> Say that in the camera. Yeah. Say that in the camera. Ty. Ty. We know you rig the JCC draft. It's cool. Dave, what minute are we, Dave? I got to tell. I'm going to text Ty right now. We are uh, about 50. No, no, sorry. Uh, what are we? 30. Tate, episode 19, <laughs> also mentioned that Ty rigs teams. I mean, I mean, how do you work there and not rig it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I mean, like, how many back to backs has he got now? He wins pretty much a championship, right? Every so year. I mean, I mean, we just, you know, in 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 in, poli- in the political world, you'd get a federal investigation <laughs> on this. Uh, Who do we call it to investigate the JCC draft? Oh, you know, uh, you know, in town, I think we would have to get the corporation council involved okay. in that, and, and you know, and if it gets real serious, we, you know, this is this is because the JCC is not necessarily just in town. We may have to go to you know the oh, attorney, yeah, the attorney general's office on this one. Yeah, I think that. Call the AG. Yeah, I think the AG should be in very. Ty, much you may involved. be getting a call soon. Uh-oh. Ty, watch out, man. Did, uh, about Andy, I don't know if you know Andy. Oh yeah, point guard, Michigan State. Okay. Where's Michigan State stuff. You may have balled with yeah, him a few yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you think of his game? Uh, he's good. He's good. Yeah, I like that. Scotty Mack, lefty. Yeah. yeah. What do you think of his game? Um. Yeah, it's pretty nice. I think I don't. I don't. I'm, I'm. It's escaping me at the moment, but I'm sure if I saw him, I, I remember it. But yeah, I think so. And then and then Sterling plays with Ty, yeah. right? Yeah. And Sterling, shout out to Sterling. <laughs> Sterling. So I go way back to North Stars AAU. Uh, Sterling. Sterling's got that deep. That deep ball. Did he ball. just chuck then too? Um. Oh yeah. Sterling's always. Does he look at the hoop? Did he look at the hoop then? Um, yeah, you know, it's, I mean, Sterles. Does he, does he always bring the ball way back oh, yeah. over here? Oh, always had it. You know, he's got that high release, um, but it, it's money. Yeah, no, he's got a great can't, shot. Can't, I can't, can't complain. If it goes in, it goes in, right? He's got some down low. Yeah, you know. Pump, bump yeah. and shoot. Yeah, no, I mean, Sterles' game is nice. I mean, I'm just impressed. He's still, he's, he, he plays, I mean, he plays so much. But he, you know, Sterl, shout out to Sterl. Man, my man does all that work over at Weaver High. And he's an AD. Yeah, big shout out on there. Awesome place that they've got going. He's doing an awesome job over there. Everyone talks yeah. really highly about the work he's doing. But yeah, though Sterling and I go way, way, way back to North Stars AAU. Oh. Did he did he play a hall? No, no, no. Um, uh, he played at uh, he played at, uh, at, at, at East Catholic at Frank for a little bit, and then he played at uh, St. Paul's. So that's where he played. Yeah. Nice. Not East Catholic. Sorry, sorry, Stro. Don't don't hold me honest. <laughs> no offense. No yeah. Offense. Um, but yeah, he had he had he 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 had a nice nice little high school. And what about Tate from Gastro Park? You ever play with him? I've not played with Tate, um, but you what know. Episode was Tate. Episode nineteen. Oh nice. oh wow. Test to me. Episode nineteen for Tate from Gastro Park. He's a tall guy. He yeah. played college hoop too. He did. Yeah, I was gonna call you out when, at Gastro Park. You guys. So when Gus and I play. Maybe you and Tate could I'll play. I'll play, yeah. Sure, let's go. 
All right, so Liam just called you out, Tate. We're doing a f- f- fundraiser. We're doing one-on-ones for Facebook Live. Me <laughs> versus Gus. Tate versus Liam. All right. Who should be the warm-up and who's the undercard? Uh, I mean, if he played college basketball, I mean, clearly I'm the under. I'm, I'm not the uh, the the main person here. All right, so we'll give him like he's probably a favorite. Where did where, did where did he play? Where did he play? Oh, ah, I wish I got to go watch. I thought it was an episode, episode 19. nineteen. I want to say it's like a D three school. I think in the Midwest. I'm guessing okay. now. All right. Yeah, come to find out, Tate's dad is like six eight. Oh, all right. Did not know that. I wore the the uh, Scotty Pippins with the big air. Oh A-I-E-R. yeah, I love those. Had those. Had you those, had them, right? Yeah, for sure. And he's like, I got a funny story about those. And he's like, I've never beat my dad in driveway hoop. And he said, If I beat you, I'll buy you those sneakers, or I'll kick in half or something, because you know they're expensive. Those are the like those are so expensive. Those are like the the most expensive oh, shoe ever. Yeah, I had them on the other day at Gastro Park. Big sneaker guy. We yeah. mentioned that in multiple oh, yeah. episodes, but. uh he beat his dad and got those ears. So it's like, and I wore those. Do you, go, do you go, like do you have the USA ones or the black and white? The black and white. Okay. Like the Scott, like the Scott yeah. Pippins, right? Yeah, the Pips. Um, my story was in basic training. Well, after basic training, you go to AIT, Advanced Individual Training, right? At Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio, and we had a a, a league, like a, almost an intramural, but in the uh, on the base, right? And I had my mom ship those down to me. And everyone was like, oh. And I like led the team in scoring in the B division. There is an A division. I was in the B division, but led the scoring, led, dove on the floor, and I was wearing no sneakers. So like, I mean, that's those, my memory. Those shoes are so dope. But like, yeah. would you think back at it? Because I, I was a huge Barkley guy. Yep. But those shoes are so heavy. They're very clunky. Yeah. I mean, I, I, got, I bought the Barclays in my, in my adult age with my, you know, afterwards. And I'm like, yeah, man, these things are not the ball in. These are the yeah, walk in. Big, heavy, solid bottoms. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my, I mean, my go to, if I could ball in any shoe all the time, would be the like the different versions of the Kobe Bryant's. Like, just great, great shoes, light. Um, yeah, I was going to guess the Kobe's for you. Yeah. Yeah, you're a Kobe fan. I'm a big low, low, low top ball. Oh wow! Shoot, yeah, I've been. I morphed down to the, to the mids. I was up tempo, was like high tops. Yep. And now I'm doing more mids. Oh, yeah. No, I can't. They, it's actually better for your ankles to have the low tops because your ankles get stronger. Was, yeah. Or so I've been told. Yeah, and then they say ankle braces just weaken your yep. ankles. Yeah. But whatever makes you feel comfortable. Yeah. Sometimes I wear the knee brace. Sometimes I don't. But when you get old, it doesn't matter anymore. Right. So you sprain your ankle, it hurts a lot more. I could just my ankle still hurts. Yeah. And what about Chris Williams? Chris Williams, uh, Chris Williams is like a four, like a you know power forward type. So we used to do tra- travel basketball together over at. Uh, we used to practice over at Sedgwick, uh, West Harvard Travel. Shout out to Travel Basketball, West Harvard Travel Basketball, and and counselor Chris Williams, who is who is retiring at the. Uh, I know. I heard that. That's... Ripe old age of uh, 37, 38. Um, but yeah, he you know he's got he's got two kids you know um, he's done it for he's done another term than I have so um, but yeah he's he's been a great guy to I recently to work just with. saw him at Sally and Bob's he had the two kids I have my two kids okay. great guy yeah one big Sally Bob's person. I mean, he lives around the way does he yeah he lives okay. on like like right Race off of Road Fern. or something yeah Fern I think no I, I thought that was great I forgot where and when you were like giving them kudos and shout outs and though you're on either side of the aisle I think that's very important and as long as it's for the benefit of the community yeah right I mean in what local, made you say and do yeah. that in local government like you, I mean you you, you you know you're gonna have some disagreements but for the most part like you get to a certain point where you know <clears throat> like what we were talking about the other night like you know we we're on this um uh, educators uh, Zoom. You know, we're all on Zooms. Meet the candidates. Meet the W-H-E-A candidates. WHEA hosted. That's meet right. The candidates. And uh, you know, just growing up in town, like you know, I was wearing, I was trying to, I was rocking my Hall sweatshirt because you know, Hall High School, right here. <laughs> um, but um, you know, one of the guys who was running was what was my basketball coach at Hall. But you, you grow up. If you grow up in town, you you naturally run in and you have all these like you know inter interwoven webs with everyone. And 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 Chris and I just so happened to grow up with each other. Um, he he went to both Kingswood and Connor, so he knows my wife and me. My my, my wife went to <clears throat> Kingswood, 
So we just have a lot of c- commonality, and his dad knows my dad, and um, and like I said, we played travel together. So like, does he still hoop? I don't think he still hoops. Um, I, I I I mean, I we, we, we you might need to get Chris on here to correct the record yeah. for that. Um, but I don't think he. I don't think he I'm does. here now to ask Chris to be a guest on Feeney Talks with Friends. <laughs> Always yeah. been a great guy and a supporter of Friends of Feeney. Yeah, he's a he's a From really day good. one. Uh, reached out to me to thank me for what we were doing, and yeah. this is seven years ago. Um, just yeah, he's great, a good, he's, a, he's a good man, good man. Yeah, really cool. And then yeah, you mentioned uh, another town council or someone that was running in also on the show and basketball coach Rick Bush. Oh yeah. Rick Bush. How's his hoop game? Rick, uh, I mean, Rick played at UConn. I mean, I mean, he walked on at UConn, so I don't actually know if he played. Uh, no I mean, one waved the towel. I, I, we also have to have like Rick. Bush. We, we also have to have f- photo evidence and video evidence of if he actually got on the floor. Um, <laughs> but no, no, no. Of course, I mean, he's, he's a super accomplished on that level. He um, <clears throat> he played with um, uh, Tate uh, George. Maybe? He played with Tate Chris George. Smith? Yep. Um, the year that they won the NIT. Oh, wow. um, yeah, with Phil Gamble, <clears throat> who is who is my coach at Hall for a, a very short period of time. Um, Does Gamble have ties to West Hartford? Um, no, not anymore. Uh, he didn't really uh, end well at the Hall High School, uh, oh, but okay. but nonetheless, uh, it was a great experience to 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 meet and and you know see see him in action. And um, but yeah, no, it was it was cool. No, I like Rick Bush. I played hoop with him. Uh, called me this morning about helping someone out that had a house fire. So, yeah. and then he immediately said, "I've already made a donation to Friends of Feeney." So I kind of instructed him how to start a fundraiser on the Facebook page. So be on the lookout. Uh, we're gonna help someone in need. Uh, was displaced, lost everything. Yeah. Uh, he's gonna fill me in more. We were I would talk quickly. Yeah. But he said he uh, already made a very generous donation. And he wants it all to go there. We have some money in case of that. We have some bedding and some clothing we're going to give. And just happy to help. And so be on the lookout for the Facebook fundraiser. Thank you for Rick Bush for starting that. And uh, be on the look at that. Shout out to Chief Priest, too, the fire chief in town. Chief Priest is is like one of the best people I've met. Also, shout out to Chief Vernon Riddick as well, both of them we are so lucky in town to have them like when something happens like these are the guys that are in yeah. charge of like making sure everyone's all right speaking of which they said someone was on site <clears throat> when they called 911 four minutes they arrived in 20 minutes it was gone yeah and they did it in a way where they didn't flood the entire house because sometimes you yep. spray water it can wet the second floor mm-hmm. and the first floor mm-hmm. or do damage they said like very precise and immediate and like focused and they, he said they swooped in like superheroes yep put out the fire and like instantaneously so yeah that is amazing we had a smoke uh carbon monoxide issue one time and of course it's going off at like two in the morning my babies were young we mm-hmm. just moved kind of to west hartford my wife's like freaking out and they were there and i it felt like 30 seconds for me when i called so yeah we that have, response time is key, and we, it means so much. Yeah, we have a. I mean, we we have a great emergency response team in town, and um, you know that goes. That's just been like kind of a big thing that we've. I think people like, one expect in town, but two, it's been something that we continue to invest in. Make sure we we you know we just we hired someone um, uh, like an emer- like someone who to handle all of our emergency response calls. Um, and you know the, both Chief Priest and Chief uh, Riddick are new to the town, um, but are seasoned vets elsewhere. Chief Priest came to us from the Yukon Fire Department. And Time out. Where did where did Chief Riddick come from? Oh, Dave. Where, uh, Dave. DC. I'm asking you. He's asking you because you know he wants you to talk about Waterbury. Oh, Waterbury! Come on, man. <laughs> Yeah. Liam knew I didn't. I had to stop him. That's a running gag on the. I, I Waterbury. Waterbury. <laughs> we try to get that in every time. It's and it happened. I was waiting for the Vern. And, Vern. Yeah. I gave you multiple chances, uh, I Dave. It. I blew it. Vern, cool. Vern represents the, the Brass City pretty strongly. Love Vern. I taught his nephew Jordan. Okay. We've talked about that multiple times, and uh, we both went from Waterbury to West Hartford. Yep. I hope to be a, get him on here. Can he be a friends of Feeney, Feeney yeah, talks I mean, with friends? I mean, you know, but you got to get in his schedule. I mean, that's a tough book to get into. 
True. I'm going to go through Jordan's mom. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can give you, you, you can. Shout out to Conrad, Jordan's yeah. dad. Shout out to. I'll, you know, I'll put it in good word with you. All right? Please do. All right. Just make sure when you see him, you know, it's like off, not in his Julia, profession, Jordan's mom, capacity, Julia. Sorry. You know. You know. No, he, uh, Jordan was like still, I don't have favorites, but he was up there. Yeah. And I went to his house for dinner. We played, this is my student. We played Guitar Hero. Okay. Um, and like, uh, what was that song? Weezer, will you destroy my sweater? I remember <laughs> to this day, I'm doing, I'm like, my wife's like, I don't know what, what job that you can go to your student's house, hang out with their parents, the mom cooks us a wonderful meal, <laughs> and you're playing Guitar Hero or Sing Star, Rock Band, one of them, and it was just a wonderful connection. We're still connected. He went on to play hoop at uh, Dean, Okay. the Maroon, uh, Dean, Maroon Jerseys. He made the Jim Calhoun 30 for 30. Oh. They did one on uh, when Calhoun was at St. Joe's. Uh, yeah. Jordan Booker was lighting his team up. <laughs> Calhoun called a timeout, sat down the guy that was guarding <laughs> Jordan. So shout out to Jordan. Shout out to Julia Conrad. Uh, Julia's going to reach out to Vern. Vern's going to be a guest because uh, just he's a wonderful person. Yeah. Well, I mean, she, he, I mean he's and a. Where's Prius from again? I'm sorry. Uh, Prius? Priest came, Pri- Chief Priest came from uh, the oh. Yukon Fire Department. So the U- Yukon, Yukon used to have its own f- fire department that kind of was intermingling, but he came over here. Uh, and he's been just an absolute rock star for us. Um, I actually was just, he helped me with a constituent related issue recently. And, um, you know, he's just, he's just very responsive. But uh, uh, Chief Riddick is also just, an, he's a state rock star he's a, he's on every like you know council of chiefs that could possibly be did he move closer to west hartford not to get all personal i you know I, I don't know i mean i mean i haven't asked him that but uh <clears throat> he's a know. big guy too yeah he's a, what's his hoop he, game you think? I, I'm, 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 sh- I'm i think he may give you a little run for the money in the paint yeah you know? i mean he's got he, you go back to back you might lose that one yeah he's got like six six yeah he's tall he might be a little bit taller than that but he's tall dude no, him and his brother, wonderful to the Waterbury community yeah. and just wonderful people and just um, so happy that we're lucky, fortunate yeah. Yeah, to, for to sure. have him have as that chief. Type of, and we just have rock stars. We do convocation every year at Conard as teachers, mm. and Vern's up there one day, and he's like, i just like to shout out Eric. And I'm like, oh. Uh-huh. And it was Eric, the head of security. Uh-huh. <laughs> Eric, some, uh, and I was like, Oh, ooh. part of me was like, "Why'd you even get your hopes up?" Because wow. you're like, just Eric brought you to the with a D. Eric dropped you, huh? Eric Tagle, Eric Densey. Oh, oh, got you, man. Oh, I was just you, like, oh. I was like, well, got at least he bad. said Eric. He was close. Yeah, but it was so funny. But Vern, wonderful person. Be a friend of. Oh, shout out to the WHPD, uh, Kylie. Lecce? Do you know any cops officers? Ky- I, uh, Kylie Lecce? I think so, yeah. yeah. He reached out on Instagram. His wife's a teacher. He saw the magnets. He wants a bunch of magnets. Okay. And then another officer reached out, uh, comes to the school, and is like, so, secretary calls, like, Feeney, the cops are here to talk to you. And I'm like, oh, boy. <laughs> Get down there, and it's a big guy. Uh, officer with Where his, were you Saturday night? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> officer... With a Z, but he's like, and he could, could you tell me about this? And he reaches in his pocket and pulls out a magnet. And I'm like, gotcha. all right. So okay. that's Friends of Feeney. He's like, I heard you help families. I have a truck. I'm willing to donate to help drive around. Do you deliver beds to people on couches in need? And I'm like, oh, this is awesome. But it was weird standing in the principal's office talking to this humongous cop. Yeah. Now we are, we're, we're really like, I, we have a great, we have so many talented people on that staff and and um you know i think particularly over the last year both the fire and the police have just been through a lot alongside the teachers as you heard me talk about last night just our like the public service folks in town have done such an excellent job of you know maintaining that excellence that we all kind of come and expect in town um and the in the you know our police officers our fire um you know, firemen, firewomen um, have all done a fantastic job, and then the teachers have obviously like just crushed it. No, I really love that. Even in my school, they were like maybe I want to say 
for teachers in the school that had children in the school. Mm. So my daughters went there. It's like my community, you know, I moved from Waterbury to West Hartford. I taught at the school that I went to as a kid, Kingsbury School. Right meant a lot to me to go in the same hallways I went as a kid. And then I get hired in Wolcott School, the same school that my daughters went to. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm teaching like from the heart with passion and just, um, but to have your daughters in the same school is like a dream come true. Yeah. You can't put a price tag on that. No. And just, I, I thought I was special, but then like last night, every town council, my, all my kids went there, every, in very, the number was very high on, residents in town that also teach in town yeah do you, do you remember that number last night but it was just uh, very yeah impressive it, it, it was something like um like 300 or yeah. something like that yeah like five yeah 600 500 three um but just and they kept saying that if we had a religion it would be education yep uh you know it's the crown jewel people come here um, especially if you have a child with, you know, some sort of individual I needs. I mean, we're a New York Times, you know, top community. You know, that like, made New York Times yeah. top 10 places to move to. Yeah. You know, big deal. That's big huge. Deal, you know, um, and, you know, it, you know, it starts from the top and the mayor's done a great job and, and the town manager. I just, we just had everyone stepped up in town during the last, I mean, the last couple of years have been hard on everyone, but, um, it's been it's been cool to see. I just love the fact, and I, again, I thought I was special. We my we found out we were living in New Haven. Uh, found out my wife's having twins, both being educators. We're yep. like, we're moving to West Hartford. Right. Got the first house we could find because, mm -hmm. um, just we saw a park, saw a school. We we're like, all right, great. Let's and go. Then, like, part of me was like, oh, West Hartford, but it was like one of the most, you know, beneficial, best move I've ever made. You know, playing hoop making friends finally losing friends on the, <laughs> on the basketball court yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah finally got a job it took me like five years of living on the street across from the principal yeah. dr k shout out to plato dr k i was like plato i'll paint your house i'll mow your lawn he's like nope people he goes people wait at my car former students to get in to be a teacher finally like, one day he's people like people bring me coffee and bagels and donuts every day <laughs> Step your game up. Yeah. He's like, he goes, it's, it's already painted, Feeny. Your but, begging game is weak, <laughs> Feeny. <laughs> but then finally one day he's like, I got good news and bad news. I can get you an interview, but I'm retiring. And I was like, I'll take it. So I got the interview and I ended up working for a couple other principals. But best move I've ever made. And uh, again, I have daughters here. And then you bury the other applicants. Right? <laughs> <It's what happened. laughs> Having daughters in the school system, I cannot be... Uh, more impressed shout out to jen uh, chelsea smith chelsea smith giving, teacher of the year give a shout out to someone you do or don't know you, it's my daughter's teacher okay. sixth grade teacher all right really pushed them for english and writing and uh, ended up two years later winning teacher of the year so that meant a lot yeah my daughter had kindergarten teacher mashad he won teacher of the year that was neela bridget had miss stanish in fifth grade she got teacher of the year so I don't know if this, the teacher so much as the students they get. And maybe, or like, I mean, there's a lot of pressure on you. <laughs> I mean, your daughters are around a lot of teachers a year. What's going on, man? I have nothing to do with it. <laughs> Which I will humble brag, I got nominated last year oh, for Teacher of the Year. I did not know that. Yeah. That, yeah. I didn't want to like, you know. Yes. But uh, it That's meant excellent. a lot. It That's meant excellent. a lot. It was 35 people out of 600 got nominated. Yeah, there you go. Five go on to the next round. Okay. Unfortunately, I did not make that round, but right. it was a huge honor and just feeling recognized and um, more stickers, more stickers. Yeah. But it was great. So we're talking about it and all this teacher talk. Do you have a favorite teacher? Can yeah. I guess? Yeah. Did you mention it last? I night? did. I did. Okay. I didn't want to. It's okay. spoiler. That's all right. Liz Devine, Miss Devine, yep, Miss Liz Devine, uh, living Tell, living legend yes. in Liz town. Divine. Yep, um, I actually had both Devines. Tom, for, yeah, Tom, Tom was my. Actually, is I mean this is also dating me. Uh, I was in Mr. Devine's class on 9/11, and like you know everyone knows where you were. Yeah, like Mr. Devine came flying in with the TV like that. I remember that, but going back to Mrs. Miss Devine. She was where the light went off. I was, ironically, taking a government class with her. Uh, and she, you know, light bulbs went on and, uh, 
you know, the rest is history. Uh, Hey, no yeah, pun intended. Right, uh, but yeah, no, she she's excellent, um, and and you know all the stuff that she's done for town ta- in, in town, um, the Witness Stone project, uh, obviously very relevant right now in town, and um, you know it was it's just it's uh, awesome to to see what she's how many people she's impacted. Some people I grew up with, like you know, also. Are you still in contact with Liz Devine? Yeah, here and there. Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, we, you know, Facebook hit, hit her up. Um, when she, I think she's done a couple of book drives, um, uh, donated a couple of times to that. But, um, yeah, you know, I see her every once in a while. Uh, she's very good friends with um, Tracy Wilson. You know, and Tracy Wilson's the, the town historian. So, I, I, you know, they kind of are at a lot of events that the, the council's at. Um, but, yeah, no, I see them too. No. Yeah. Yeah. I worked on the executive team with Tom. Yeah. I've never really, I was at the retirement dinner, possibly hosted the retirement dinner when Liz retired. Yeah. A uh, huge round of applause for her, uh, like 35 years, 40 years maybe. Yeah. Like both so of them. So amazing. Yeah. The, and they mentioned, maybe Tom, he said like the same classroom too. Yeah, I mean, or then I, they moved it for a bathroom and upgrade. Maybe to a chemistry I mean they unit. were. I mean, like you know, they probably put Tom over in the corner. <laughs> I give you know Liz the prime time spot. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but the, no, they they they're definitely you know in the same department. At least when I was at Hall, uh, which was you know a long time ago in a galaxy far far away. But um, yeah, no, like you know working very close with one another i mean god bless them and that just hat, hats off to that marriage that is something that i could not n- not do very well but uh both being educators both being That's educators a lot of literally like papers. having their desks next to each other you know were they grade level like colleagues same subject um, i don't no so she did more u.s history he well i i had her for like u.s history she did he did like ap um ap like modern europe history and she did like ap U.S. history and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, Tom so both very smart. Do you always both, have the beard. I, I think they're Cornell people. Wow, Cornell Ithaca. Yeah, big red. Yeah. Right. Uh, the, Mr. Devine always had uh, a beard as long as I know, and I think it runs in the family because I think there's they got sons that are also like, bearded. Yep, bearded. Beard game strong like yeah. Gus or yeah, no? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think so. You know, less of a like a fl- like a flip to it, <laughs> but just strong. Nice. Yeah. No, Best Buy is wonderful. Uh, Dr. Wilson is fantastic. Yep. Uh, great. You know, the list goes commissioner, on and on. Commissioner Buy now. You know. Commissioner Buy. Got. Yep. <clears throat> I think my wife's on meetings with her. For the public uh, department of education. Or early, early early childhood. Commissioner early early childhood. Yep. Obviously, super important right now. Um, you know, as <laughs> someone who's got. Uh, a kid out of pre-K, one in pre-K, you know, it's super and I important. think they also make calls for summer camps, too. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Flashback to our earlier conversation. Uh, uh, Beth used to run the Aura Farm where Rory, where we were just talking about the 4-H. Um, and it's a, again, that's a great space. Does she still have ties with that? or I'm not sure. I'm sure she hasn't. Just like, connected. Yeah. So. But she did a great job. I think she really kind of resurrected that The place. Bloomfield one? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I when I went to go see James show his bull, I want to say bull, cow, um, but um, I drove to like Bolton or the middle of oh, nowhere. Boy. Where was it? As far. Um, but it was a huge fear. And then James, they have to like. A, like a fair? Yeah, like huge the, fair. The Durham fair? I don't think it was Durham. Maybe it was Durham. But it was the 4-H. Okay. Um, anyway, for this cow they have to spike up the mane on this cow and hairspray it and hair dry uh hair blow it blow yep. blow dryer blow dryer it up and it has to be like and then they were trimming it to a perfect mohawk on this cow and they this day like the cows get treated so good they get perfume they actually spray paint their patches to make them pop they like brush their teeth and they're that people were like going down like this to this mohawk on a on a cow right and then my buddy James showed it, and uh, I think he came in second. But uh, hey, he, he may have came in second that day. But his podcast is number one, <laughs> award-winning podcast, Dave, I'm here at Direct Line Media. Who was that? 
James Mark. With Episode the, 26. All right, that's going to lead us into uh, Stephen King Jr. 12. Close, 13. Oh. I'll do one more. Want to check out the list and who do you know? Do you want to do some shout outs? All right, keep Let's guessing me. Yeah, right, guess, uh, asking me. Seth. I mean. Seth. Seth. Wickersham. Seth Wickersham. Six or seven? Seven. Oh, right. Seth, shout out to Seth Wickersham. He is in the New York Times top 10 best selling nonfiction book. Nice. We had him on here. Okay. Remember, he was talking so much Bill Belichick, Tom Brady? Yep. He was in the middle of writing that book yep. while he was on the podcast. You heard it here. We, first. You heard it here on Feeney Talks with Friends at Direct Line Media. Yep. He did a whole like eight minutes on the relationship from Bill and Brady and his diet. He knew so much. And I'm thinking, this guy, he was practicing material on my show. It's better to be feared. It's better to re be feared than respected. Top 10 New York Times. I don't make yeah. recommendations, but I'm going to recommend everyone go out and buy that book. It's better to be feared than respected. I could even get it signed because these are friends of Feeney. He was on Feeney's Talks with Friends, episode 7. Unless, Seth unless, the, unless the podcast didn't go that well. Eh. Did it go well? We still, we're still cool. Okay. Good. He signed it. He, he, he wore a hoodie once and he sent it to me. I said, You never look better. <laughs> he put it out on his Facebook. I never looked better. He used my line. And then, he, then I, you know, of course, Feeney and me, I send him an 8 by 10 and he writes a really nice quote. Like, uh, some people say they'll do things and it takes a real, I don't know, it was really sweet and kind and got it framed with my Rebecca Lobo pick. She came to camp with her Solid. 96 gold medal. I may have might have bit, bit it, bitten it. You might have bitten it, yeah. Left some teeth, and on this, she signs it. Feeney, you left teeth marks in my metal. It's on the picture of me by it. Yikes. So, so I don't know if there might have been. might have bitten off more than you could chew. <laughs> hey. So we're, we're working, and uh, episode 30, we're still growing. We hope for 30 more. I mean, this is a good list. I mean, Day Pylon, I grew up with. Oh, yeah? Uh, yep. We lived on Auburn, uh, and our parents knew each other. Um, Let's see here. Episode 30. Yep. Uh, obviously referred to M Mr. The Mr. Ryan Keating. Oh, yep. The man, the myth, the legend. Uh, Ty, you know, the <laughs> the ultimate fixer of drafts. Team stacker. Uh, Anissa, uh, obviously, like, well-known in town for all the work she does with small businesses and the, the hub she's got over here. Tate, you know, shout out to Tate and the... That's awesome, Matt Whitney. My 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 wife went to uh, high school. The Whitneys are all you know pretty prominent at uh, Kingswood. Who else we got in here? Whitney's what seventeen? Ooh, twenty one. Wrong. Uh. Wrong. Close though. Pretty close. Eighteen. Twenty one was slap. Oh yeah, I skipped Senator over slap. I, the Senator Slap. You're uh, thirty one. Look at that connection. Another that. and then Dennis House, of course, right. Yep. Uh, can't forget about him. Um, but yeah, you got it. I mean, look at this. I mean, how'd, how did I even get on here? A bunch Studs. Of, you started season bunch, three, buddy. A <laughs> bunch of rock stars on here. You're, you're starting. You're, you're, you might be, you know, season two might be starting off a little <laughs> shaky if you're getting me on here. Well, I mean. I appreciate it, though. It's fun. You know, fun. Much we respect. talked a lot of school, a lot of teachers, and uh, my friend Christian, yep. student of mine, did something really nice. He passed out. He made homemade packs of legend EX. All right. He passed them out to every student. I'm like, that's so nice. And he's like, Feeney, Mr. Feeney. Some kids call me Feeney. But uh, Mr. Feeney, can you open these on your podcast? So we're going to talk Pokemon. Okay. Thank you, Christian. And then we're going to get into a fun little crazy question game. We're going to talk Pokemon, which neither one of us know anything yes. about. I know that kids like Pokemon. That's about it. And I know that. They are a distraction to instruction, so you must take them away. But these are very special cards. Uh, I don't, I don't know if you want to name a few with some cool points. But um, Christian, I can this one's glowing. This one's got to be oh. worth at least a hundred bucks. Yeah, I got pry roar I, break, I, Christian. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've got garbage over here. Um, I've got an energy one. Okay. Uh, Hold them up to the camera so we can see them. This is for Christian again. Christian's dad uh, plays energy, in the which I need because I was up early because my children wake me up early. Um, 
uh, get some energy t- points. Timber, like what's the what's that that song, right? Tim Timber, yeah, like yeah. Timberlake, Timberland. No, know. what's it? Never mind. We're going Dating. Timber. Yeah, there you go. Ah, yeah. What's what's her name? I like singing songs. Yeah, yeah we're not gonna. We're get yelling. It. Come on, sing along. S- Dave. Senior moment. Get a little Cat Stevens. Cat Stevens, that's my jam. There you go. You know that's my favorite. Swamp Swampert. Ooh. Vanilla-ish. I think that's a cool name. Yeah. Uh, but it's, I mean, that was my memo. Like, Whalmer. I'm like, Christian, if you don't have enough for everyone, you can't pass them out. Because yeah. I think the day before he brought it 19. Oh. I was like, buddy, you need 22. Then, of course, he's like, all day. Can I pass them out now? I'm like, no, no, no. We still have math. Then it's like, school ends at 320. We pass them out at 3 o'clock. You lost them. So mm-hmm. it was already, luckily, we're packing up for dismissal. We're getting backpacks. We're coloring in our blue calendar. We're preparing. Yeah, the day man, was I over. I got things to do, man. If I don't that, have time if, for Pokemon. If you pass out Pokemon before 3 o'clock, yeah, it's, it's they were over. done for the day. It's over. Yeah. Then I said, guys, take them home. But I thought it was really cool that he – I asked the dad first, and dad was like, if he wants to. So I think that's great. Uh, we did a whole lesson on including people, never excluding uh, just I always say that be a good friend so here we are shouting out Christian and his legend packs of legend EX thank you for doing that all right moving on to our next thing how you feeling on episode 31 I mean I feel great you know like uh, just you know living my best life with you right now right yeah is this the best podcast compare this to the Ryan Keating we Ryan Keating we had we we overlapped a lot of guests. Yeah. Matt Whitney, they did the brown bagging it. Oh, okay. So they, like you open up a bag up, you brown bag a wine, we taste it, yep. take the the guess where it's from, how much, what kind. So I was like honored. Oh, he's brown bagging it. He does a, like little skits online. So I'm like, can we do one here? Thinking it's like going to be an exclusive. Yeah. I Google Matt Whitney to see like his, his job title. He was on the Weeha with Ryan mm-hmm. doing a brown bagging. Man. Two years before he did it on my show. I mean, Ryan. So thanks, had, Ryan. Ryan had a had a had a good little th- thing going there for you know. Just you should just yeah. ask him what happened yeah. to it. Um, you know, maybe I had. Uh, you, you I guess, was a guest. You know, competition brings out the best in you, right? You know? yeah. I, we could combine. If maybe you could be a co-host. Yeah, I mean, look, Beanie I, Keating. You, you need me friends. to come back and like we need to start talking real. You know, Nick's podcast. Nick's podcast. We can start just talking local podcasts and you know, just get it, get hoop. into it. You know? We could bring the camera to a hoop game, yeah. Hall Connor game. You know, you want to do the brown bag game again? Yeah, I'm, I'm in. Bagging for that. it. I'm just gonna steal everyone's stuff. Yeah, brown bagging it here. Mm, I'm in. Let's do it. All right, now we have a sponsorship. Okay. Crazy Donut. Donut Crazy, Whoa. episode 10. How are you going to mess that up? Oh, man. man. That's sponsorship. Your, like, that's a, your key sponsor. Do it again. This Crazy Questions are sponsored by Donut Crazy here on Farmington Avenue. You can get a Crazy Donut or a Daily Donut. Try them out. They're owned by Irene. Irene is a wonderful person. Episode 10. They got great egg sandwiches. Great egg sandwiches. Great avocado and, toast. And they also have really good donuts. <laughs> Donuts, come and, to find out. And actually, out. you know what? Under underrated is their 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 uh, iced coffee. Coffee. I coffee was just gonna is, shout out. Coffee I mean, is amazing. Feeny, we, you and I have run in there with our kids there. I mean, my kids like. Oh yeah, they, they right. crave they they go to this place right like they got they could do, you know, cinnamon toast crunch on a on a donut and my kids no matter where you go they'll be like no I'll, I'll take the glazed. I'm like old school yeah, classic. You, got, you could literally have a you know you can have a brownie. On the donut, on the, you could have a birthday cake on the donut, not not a birthday a cake donut, of, but birthday cake on the donut. Yeah, a scoop of chocolate chip cookie dough on the donut, cheesecake on the donut, yeah. uh, fruity pebbles oh, on yeah. the donut. Fruity pebbles, is, that's dope. I can't wait till like a, a bar uh, who, of was snick, it the, a Snickers, the uh, French on toast the donut. one? Oh, that French oh, toast one. Mm, she brought that in last week. She was a drop-in Shout guest. Shout out to Donut Crazy. That is just perfection how's your whiskey game we had this uh remember the whiskey that we had dave last week matt not only did he bring in a happy gilmore extra large check for five thousand dollars can you just invite me back for this like i'll trade we drank whiskey that was worth nine hundred dollars a bottle we had it last episode here and he brought it here wow dave tasted it yeah i tasted it and dave tried i tried it it was the best move ever 
Dave was like, let me put this over here. <laughs> Where did it go? <laughs> and as he's leaving, he goes, oh, guys, I hate to do this, but we kind of, uh, I need to take that. Yeah. It's VIP. A lot of people want to just taste it to say that it was like something 150. I had it Googled, but uh, 150. And he, it, was all, it was like Old Forester or something? Yes. Old Forester. Yeah. Old, old Forester. 150. But it was amazing that, uh, so yeah, we had whiskey. We had a big $5,000 check. Then we had donuts, and the kids showed off their donuts and the French toast one, which was delicious. Whitney, Whitney, the Whitney family is uh, good people in town. They, they're doing a great job. I love the, the move that they did over uh, in Bishop's Corner. They're doing a good job over there. Yeah, we're going to have a, a real check reveal at the place, so I'll yeah. let you know. Please They're going to do a, a live uh, heard podcast from there, too? Oh, yeah, Dave. When he gives me the check in the maximum beverage, you're going to come record, right? We can make that happen. Well, you, you know Colin Cowherd was, is, is, I don't still, know, is he still involved? But, like, you should, that's, there it is. He should be I mean, he's in L.A. right now, but, like. But we've talked about getting some screen guests, and, Dave, I have uh, Max uh, Max Bredos yeah. was on ESPN. He went to LA. He's mm-hmm. going to be a screen guest. Um, Fritz, Brooklyn Fritzy from the Dan Patrick Show, okay. producer. He's going to be a screen guest. Yep. And then maybe we can get Cowherd. Yeah, you should definitely get Cowherd on there. That'd he's be, good. I mean, he's, Opinionated. I, I think he's one of the best. Yeah. I mean, you know, people feel uh, he's a he's a um, polarizing uh, character. But I, I've I've been listening to him since he was on just you know AM radio. Yeah, back in the day. I got a picture with him. He was at, I, I go to my students' games, and Leo was playing soccer at Farmington, FHA, FHS, FHS, FCA, whatever, the bubble over in Farmington yep. to soccer. And Leo's dad um, is like, Jeff, Jeff's like, look over there. That's Kyle Hurd. His son's on the team. He's like way in the corner. I'm like, uh, he obviously he's in the corner because he doesn't want to be bothered. Right. And finally, it's like, all right, fine, fine. I'm like, listen, coward. Luckily, I got that pick because like two weeks later, he left ESPN, went to Fox, California. We'll never get that opportunity that, for the pick. Got that real, got that real money. <laughs> got the real. Oh yeah, he got paid. Oh yeah. I mean, like you, you get your own ten mil or something. You get your own show, and you start doing, you know, you do NFL. You, you get paid money for that. He's but uh, he's he's awesome. Um, big fan. Yeah, I always heard that rumor. We have a ton of in, in West Harvard has a ton of ESPN talent that lives here. You know, we've had. I, I'll tell you a funny story. ESPN. So back in back in Liam Sweeney's prime, you know, like 22, 23, pre Mrs. Sweeney. Um, I'm out at Grants Club Grant, Club Club Grants. We call it at the time because oh, yeah, you know after it, it got, I got you know they were doing everything very legally at the time, but they it was it, it turned up, and all of a sudden they pull out like velvet ropes like if you remember like the bar like so the bar kind of horse yep. like this and then yep. in the area there was like a table yep and they they like mark it off you're like how are you gonna mark this place is a mob right now <laughs> and in comes magic johnson will bomb uh who uh john barry and who was the other it was bill um uh and Stuart scott and they just take up the front and i'm like by the window in the front or off to the yeah, side? Yeah, like, by, like right, by, like right by the like, so like where the patio is. Yeah, but like that area right there, and they just like warded it off, and like, you know, obviously people are like, it's Magic Johnson. Like, I don't know who the rest of these people are, but everyone knows who Magic Johnson is, and people keep coming up, and Stuart Sack comes over, he's like, God rest his soul, but he comes over, and he goes, you need to back up off my man right now. <laughs> he's just trying to enjoy a drink, and you're like. Well, then why would you put him in the middle of a yeah. bar and if it was go like in the back or one of those like side. it was like one of those things you're like wow ESPN's like legit you know like they're they're doing this in Bristol you got Magic Johnson wow. really flying in for California to do this yeah yeah that's awesome I'm still regretting I went to a stag right after having knee surgery right. my buddy calls me on my way home Stu's here at a party in Southington oh yeah and I'm like, ah, I need surgery. I just want to go lay down. And, I, and, you know, that's one I regret. Yeah. Because, unfortunately, like you said, God rest his soul. Um, he was one of my favorites. Yeah. Cooler than the other side of the pillow. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. He, he was. He Booyah. Was, booyah. Cooler than the other side of the pillow is just. I love it. Yeah. He was amazing. Amazing person. Yeah. We had a lot of people go through the school. Adnan Verk was at the school. Max Bredos was at the school. Yeah producers are 
boards of directors. Greg Jewell is the producer of Sunday Night mm -hmm. Football. So Greg Jewell, shout out to Greg Jewell, board of directors, helps out with Friends of Feeney. All right, are you ready? I'm Crazy ready. questions. What minute are we? Forty minutes with Feeney? Fifty oh, minutes yeah, with Feeney? About, about an hour. Hour. We're going hours instead. So about an hour. We're, we're, we're going. Are you hour ready? Plus, I bet. You put the camera on, Liam. You ready? Crazy questions. Hit the music. Ah! Making a mess at Direct Line Media. Crazy question sponsored by Donut Crazy. Check them out. Do you like bananas? I do. Would you rather have a donkey toe or a cow foot? Uh, Come on, crazy dude. Or a what? A cow foot? Cow feet. Cow feet donkey or donkey toe or toe. cow feet? I think cow feet. Would you rather eat a cat or a Happy Meal at McDonald's? Uh, Happy wow. Meal at McDonald's? Wow. Easy. I didn't know there was anything that crazy. Layup. <laughs> Would you rather eat a Taco Bell or Burger King for the rest of your life? Taco Bell. Easy. That's my friend Selma. Awesome. Would you easy. rather... Okay. Would you rather have three feet or 25 eyes? Three feet. Would you rather have purple hair or wear a mask every day? Purple hair. Would you rather have 10 cats or 10 dogs? 10 dogs. Would you rather eat pizza that tastes like ice cream or ice cream that tastes like pizza? Uh, pizza that tastes like ice cream. These are crazy questions. Are these crazy enough for you? Yeah. I mean, Shout I mean, but the Taco Bell one was a layup. <laughs> a layup. Uh, absolute layup. Yeah, we're not eating. I mean, was it, what was the other one? The uh, the the Happy Meal. That well, was also a cat a layup. or a Happy Meal. I mean, that's a layup. That's pretty. That shows where they compare. That's a layup. That was a. Fun, that was, uh, would you rather have a runny nose or a long nose? Uh, depends on how long. <laughs> how old are you? I'm 37. What's your favorite song? Oof. Right now? Oh, man. Uh, right now, right now, right now, right now. Um, I'm a big fan of, of, of... I like the song Kanye West Hurricane. I like that a lot right now. Newer yeah. song? Yeah, brand new. I Off his new lot. one? Yep. I liked it. Uh, I mean, I liked some of it. Um, yeah. Like that, right? right not my favorite song at the moment. Would you rather be a big baby or a little baby for Halloween? Uh, like little baby, like the rapper. <laughs> not da baby. No, there's da baby and little baby. Are Very, you serious? Yes, of course. You put little in in front of anything. Little ba wow, I mean, little yeah, easy, I mean, little baby is making that money though, so his bank account is not little. Man, yeah, I missed the bow. I should have been a rapper instead of a third grade teacher. Yes, I, I yes. I, I have one line I drop all the time. Yeah. My name's Mr. Feeney. I teach grade three yeah. at Woka Elementary. Can't see me. Boom. Boom. That's pretty good, right? Nailed it, dude. Platinum. Kids are like, oh! Platinum hit. Mr. Feeney's freestyling. Can't see me. You ended with can't see me. Would you rather have spaghetti hair or Twizzler fingernails? I mean, I barely have hair right now, so I'll go with spaghetti hair. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Would you rather have big long hair or no hair at all? I mean, big long hair, of course. Fabio. Yeah. Would you rather have a job? Man bun, man bun that all day. Yeah, you're a man bun. I mean, I would do it. I mean, if I had it, I'd flaunt it, yeah? True. Yeah, I'm there. I'm there. I feel, I'm feeling it, too. Oh, please stop. Feeling it. Would you rather get a job at your favorite restaurant or live in a rock? I, I, I think my favorite restaurant. All right. What is your favorite restaurant? Uh, in town? Yeah. Can you answer? Will you answer? Uh, yes, I will. Uh, my favorite for the family is Jimmy's Pizza, no question, twice on Sunday. Where's that? Uh, on Farmington Avenue. Jimmy's? Jimmy's Pizza, yeah. Man, I just when I thought they I may tasted or may them all. I have my sign in the window for. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy's Pizza, Farmington Ave, I'm not seeing it. Yeah. Where uh, to Luna's, to the Butterfly? Like, to... No, 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 like right near Wedding Lane. Oh, that you know those little that little, those two plazas that are up there. Oh, uh, that's not on Park Road. Nope, that's no? that's Farmington Avenue. Last time I checked. I just walked by a pizza place on Park Road that I thought looked interesting. I would try it. Man, I have to try Jimmy's Pizza. Yeah, it's like Greek style pizza. They have uh, they they play uh, the hot jams like the Alvin and Chipmunks on the on the uh, jukebox. Uh, old school like mounted. Uh, Animals. Do they have the, um... Yeah, the code. Like Alvin the Chipmunks. Boom. A7. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy's. I have to try that out. All right. Shout out to Jimmy's. Yeah. Very cool. 
All uh, right, couple more. Crazy Donut sponsored. Did I say jack it up again? Crazy Donut, he did. Oh, boy. Bill, they're not going to sponsor. Losing sponsorships. Sponsor <laughs> down the tube. Yeah. Please be a sponsor of Feeny Talks with Friends so I could jack up your company name. <laughs> No, but it's a great spot. I mean, spot. how do you mess up Donut Crazy? I mean, it's, just, it's pretty much the easiest it's, name ever. It's so crazy. Yes. No. All right, last one. I'll, I'll help you out. Why don't I just do the, the, the plug and you, you, you do the, the, the All right. part, right? Would you rather go to school every day or not go to school every day? I'd like to go to school every day. Would you rather have a home or live in the jungle? <laughs> I'd like to have a home. <laughs> I don't like snakes, so. Would you rather be the teacher or the student? uh the student all right well thank you so much oh that was go ahead that was this is awesome hit me with the sponsorship uh, uh that was brought to you by donut crazy located on farmington avenue in west harford center a phenomenal place and i have given a lot of my money to you <laughs> <laughs> and then claire and rory love the glazed donuts um and uh dad likes the cold brew so I want to thank you for being here. And ultimately, you're here uh, for your work you do in the community and also just uh, your support and your help that you have given Friends of Feeney. Yeah. Uh, we saw you at the Pride event, and you made a, a generous donation. You obviously bought a hoodie. You support the magnet. So I want to thank you for the support. It means a lot. Um, well, when you say support the magnet, you mean you put it on the back of my car without <laughs> asking? Yeah, yes, but for sure. Oh, was that a And hit? my neighbors, for that matter, without asking them, but that's cool. Oh, I did knock on your neighbor's house like, Liam here? Yeah. He goes, that's next door. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, I played ball with that guy, too. Yeah, Dave, yeah. Yeah. Good guy. He was cool. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? Luckily, you ran up on the right house. <laughs> yeah. All right. If I went to the right, I might not have come out. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's tough. It's a tough neighborhood over by Morley. <laughs> but the the support is great. Um, I think you cut like an Instagram video wearing the hoodie, and it just means a lot for the support. Um, yeah, man. No, it's great. And I'm just you know, uh, it, it's awesome to see what you're doing with this organization. Uh, like, it's awesome what you're doing here. Uh, this is fantastic. I'm just happy to be here and. You know, any way I can be supportive, you know, like my, my main focus on the council is like, how do we take care of our kids in any way, shape or form? And, and, and you guys are just doing that every day. And um, I'm just happy to see, you know, people doing great things for other people. So happy to be here, man. Well, I really appreciate that. And please let me know. And look at these things. Why do not we talk about those? Oh, let's yeah. talk about them. Let's go. Sneaker. Last time I took off the sneaker and showed them. <laughs> these are my first non-Nike sneaks. Oh, uh, well, that's a big step. What, you, what do we got? Oh, the spiders? Donovan Mitchell. Okay. Yep. Oh, Connecticut, shout out, right? He, right. Went, he went to Greenwich, uh, I think Greenwich uh, Prep. So, yep. And these are the Bel Airs. Prep. He went to Bel Airs. Yeah. Dope. So, Dope. Um, I'm going to wear these. T I'm, I'm actually, these are my first time wearing them. I'm yeah. like stretching them out. I'm gonna, these are going to be my new hoop shoes. Okay. All right. Really coming. Until Ty takes them. So... What would you say? Until Ty takes them from me. Right? Ty is going to take them and put me on a bum team. Yeah. And he's going to, and you know, another movie does, he'll call the screen. Yeah. For the dude that I'm guarding. Yeah. So the screen, and I ended up trying to guard Ty at yeah. the three point line. So that's another shiesty move that he does. <laughs> does not only does he stack his team. How's Ty doing with his new NBA rule with the pump fake, man? He must, must get him left and right. But, oh, shout out again, Donovan Mitchell. I want to shout out his dad is a teacher's assistant in New York. Yeah. I did a tailgate at the Giants Cowboys game. Okay. Hung out with him all day. Coolest dude ever. Awesome. Um, so that's another reason I'm like, you know what? This guy's dad is awesome. He's in education. So maybe Donovan Mitchell, we could get on a video yeah. podcast guest. But uh, he's doing great things. And I love the Bel Air. Fantastic TV show. Uh, we're trying something new. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jalen yeah. Brown was doing his best Fresh Prince impersonation last night with that do. He had the, definitely had the, the Gumby. Well, I want to thank you. Thank you. For coming on this award-winning podcast. Thank you to episode 26, James Mark. We're going to be celebrating at the 4-H yep. with, with Liam and family have ties to it, the 4-H. Yep. Rory loves it. Yep. Big fan. Liam and Rory have ties to Donut Crazy, our sponsor. Also a big fan. Uh, we were both working hard for our community. Please let me know how I can help in the community center. Yep. 
Uh, that's walking distance from my house. Yeah. That we're, means a lot. We'll be there soon. We'll get that public input, but we're, we're early Shout on. out to the Elmwood Senior Center, uh, Community Center. And uh, Senior Center. And Senior Center. It's uh, always, it volunteers its space down by the gazebo for our Global Cardboard Challenge. Awesome. Which we had 75 people. These kids were making so, some wonderful things. If you give a kid cardboard and duct tape, you, you'll be impressed. They were making movable planes that you can get in and out. The propellers move. They had a cockpit. Uh, they were making forts, pinball machines, and that was all thanks for the beautiful lawn of um, Elmwood Community Center. So, again, wonderful community we live in. Amen. Lucky to have people like Liam Sweeney, friends of Sweeney. <laughs> something big coming up in the Better near watch future? Out. I might, might just come up. Yeah. <laughs> you want to shout out something coming up or uh, closing yeah. remarks? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, folks, I just want to remind everyone there's an election coming up on November 2nd in um, – uh, in town, um, I'm running as a Democrat. Shout out to my Row A team, uh, but uh, most importantly, you know, um, this is a nonprofit, so I don't want to be too partisan. But important that everyone gets out and just votes. It's it's really important in this day and age that the local elections are the ones that impact you the most. Uh, and uh, please get out there and vote for who, whomever it may be. And I'm kind of got my fingers crossed that it's me, uh, it, um, but. Yeah, and just review, if you were talking to town council and voting to a second grader, yeah. how would you explain how many people get voted, how many people are running, how many are, will be Democrats, how many will be Republicans? Right, so in town we have, uh, we have nine members of the council, uh, and traditionally the highest vote getter becomes the mayor. Uh, that's why Sherry Kanner is the, is the mayor, and uh, I, I think, guys, low-key take, I think she's going to be the mayor again. Um, but um, from there, uh, we have the the nine mem- the highest nine members of how many people we have uh, like we have like three hundred people running in town this year, uh, but n- really actually like uh, fifteen people, um, and so the nine out of those folks will get onto the council, um, and then we have a minority representation. So um, uh, it, tr- right now it's it's six Democrats. Th- to two Republicans and one uh, a Connecticut party. This time we have a bunch of other people running. But uh, when you go to the ballot, you get you have the opportunity to vote for six people, and so you pick and pick and choose who you want. Again, I'm a little part. I'm a little biased on this. You know, the row A people are cool. So just the top six get in, regardless uh, the, no, of the, the party. Top, the, no, no, the top okay. nine get in out of how many people? I think there's like 15 people on the ballot. Gotcha. But there, you get you only get six votes as a person. Uh, okay. So when you gotcha, go through, gotcha. if you do seven, your ballot gets thrown out. So oh, wow. just That's do important. six. Yeah. So just do six. Important to know only six. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, but yeah. No way. No way. Um, but yes. But but thank you for having me on. You know, it's just important people get out of there and vote. It is important to uh, exercise your right to vote. And I can't thank you enough for being a guest. I had a wonderful chatting with you. We talked about Liz Divine. We talked about Hoop and the Knicks. Let's go, Knicks. Let's go, Go, New York. Go, New York. Go. And again, I want to thank Dave from Direct Line Media. This would not be possible without this wonderful studio. We're on episode 31. Did I mention it is award-winning? Award-winning. Award-winning. Wow. Thank you. Uh, We'll say be a good friend on three. One, two, three. Be Be a a good good friend. friend.